Like, obviously, there's a lot of parallels between this show and The Wizard of Oz. There's two meanings of that in witchcraft. We got to talk about the personal episode highlight for myself and I believe MT and possibly Whitney as well. And that is Miss Aubrey Plaza. What is poppin' Palaxy? This week on The Bounty Board, we talk all about the first two episodes of Agatha all along. So y'all know what to do. Kick up that warp drive and let's punch this thing. Welcome back to the Guardians of the Galaxy podcast, everybody. I'm so glad that you're here. My name is MT, and I'm here with two of my amazing friends, Whitney Van Lanningham and Tommy Bechtold. What's going on, guys? Hello. I think that you introduced us wrong, and I'm going to correct you real quick. Scarlet Wit, Tom oh. DeMaximoff, and the House of MT. Yes. Those are our code names for this whole season of this series, baby. Yes. We're not going by our Christian names. We're not going by our government names. We're going by our Wanda names. Hell yeah. Uh, oh my God. I totally <laughs> it's forgot. Your Tom, it's, your, it's your mother, Tom DeMaximoff. Man, remember how mad people used to get on the break room when I would say that? People would like, <laughs> they'd be like, no, no, no. Uh, uh, here, and that, here's and that, one and that was just and that was just the other hosts of the break room. It wasn't the <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's here's one for the real fans out there. I'm Scarlet Wit, and you're watching Whitney Vision. <laughs> that's, uh, that's my sign off on my personal channel, just in case, because you guys have probably never watched it because you're not fans of mine. But I that's okay. Have, I'm a subscriber. I'm a fan. <laughs> uh, if there was a Patreon, I would pay for it. Uh, but oh, you know what yeah, else? baby. You, know what you more I'm than pay for of? it in margaritas. Oh, baby. I can't <laughs> wait. God, dear God, give me, a, give me another reason to be out in L.A. Uh, the next time I have a West Coast trip planned is in. Oh, come on, Brett. Don't be a spoil sport uh Brett's <laughs> telling us to be on topic all Brett's right telling us to be on hot topic fine let's <laughs> speak of hot topic that was in an episode of agatha all along guys what a show this is my goodness yes. agatha all along i love Catherine han i mean honestly i'll take han and any I mean, she's next to Han Solo. She's my second favorite Han. I was going to say, I was going to say Catherine Han Solo. <laughs> and, then, I mean, she, and then Han from The Fast and the Furious is my third favorite. That's my Mount Yeah, Rush, absolutely. That's my Mount That's the hierarchy Han. of Hans. Yes. I mean, she can do no wrong. I mean, she's Agatha Harkness. She was uh, Doc Ock in uh, Spider-Verse. So, like, mm-hmm. she is knocking she those sure roles was. out of the park. <laughs> Just really quick, uh, mm-hmm. my fourth favorite Han is... Uh, Shit, I was going to say something funny and I I'm forgot. So sorry. Never mind. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, Mine I forgot. Han Noodle Bar right here in Rochester, New York. Han Noodle Bar for an authentic Chinese experience you won't soon forget. Uh, <laughs> what about Hans Gruber? Oh, uh, that's what I was going to say. I, yes, okay, that's what I thought. I was like, <laughs> yes, I was going to say Hans Gruber. You're right. Okay, I shit. MT. MTU win. You can read my mind because you're a witch. You're a witch. Uh, I'm um, a green witch, and we'll get to that later. But I want to talk. I am so glad. I guess I this like for better or for worse, the way I've consumed media over the last few months has been fairly pretty targeted specific things. So I have not seen any trailers for Agatha Mm. all along. So I went in blind as a bat. And what a delight that in the first episode, we are back with the enchanted citizens of the town, uh, you know, and we're seeing all of our old favorites. Norm from Norm's Gold, played by the wonderful Asif Ali. Shout out to him. Uh, great stand-up comedian. And then we get Deborah Jo Rupp is back. Oh, I mean, just everybody. The na- the friendly neighbor is the cop. By the way, sorry, I should tell everyone. If you didn't know by now, I've blathered out. Spoilers ahead. Yeah, have not watched. Spoilers abound in this episode. Well, yeah, we're, we're not. We're, we're, the kid gloves are off. We're hitting we're you with our full magic fingies. Yeah. So I thought that they nailed the tone of a true crime mayor of East Town, but like clear parody of it. Like they were mm. taking all of the worst moments of those shows and holding oh, them yeah. up to a magnifying glass. <laughs> all of the word, all of the like witty wor- wordplay in the face of tragedy. All of the like. Everybody having like kind of flirty, sarcastic relationships with each other, even when there's no sexual chemistry. And then when yeah. there is, like, I mean, the the magnetism between her and Aubrey Plaza was like, damn, those are two insane, sexy, sexy insane. Women. That's the most homoerotic scene Ooh. that we've ever had in the MCU, except for the Deadpool Wolverine Honda yeah. Odyssey scene. Well, that one obviously <laughs> is the most homoerotic. But this right. this scene in in Agatha was the Ooh. second most homoerotic scene we've ever right. gotten in the MCU. Oh, uh, I mean, my goodness. And I thought the first episode taking its time a little bit to kind of get into the witchy, witchy, witchiness of it all was a great, great way to kind of sew it together, kind of 
tether it to WandaVision, you know, like it really felt like the continuation of that show rather than it's like, you know, a completely separate thing. And I guess from not watching the trailers, I I didn't know what to expect. I mean, I knew obviously she was going to have to get broken out of her spell, but I didn't realize it was going to be like kind of a A to B jump from WandaVision. I truly agree. And I I loved that the whole first half of the first episode was just like a big old true detective parody. And Mm. I especially loved the opening credits parodying yes. True Detective, but all of the names were everyone's WandaVision yes. names. <laughs> and, then, yes. and then it was like based on the based on the Danish classic yes. WandaVision or whatever. <laughs> <it's that. laughs> I loved that. I thought that that was so incredibly clever. I really love uh, finding out that <laughs> once she breaks out of the spell, her neighbors are just like, yeah, you've been crazy for the last <laughs> Last three years you've been on this weird true crime kick yeah. and we've just been bringing you groceries but this has been weird you seem more lucid today though <laughs> like- <Yeah>. right <laughs> well, i i was glad that uh that the neighbors rem- like remained having their lives back you know what i mean like they yeah. were right. kind of like pl- they've now become like a uh a ren fair for one for agatha like they're like they're remaining in character to like keep her from going cr- totally crazy but like they have their autonomy and agency back whereas she does well, not Well everybody except for Mr. Hart who sadly passed away apparently yes. according to uh and I think Hart. I'm fairly RIP certain- Mr. Davis Mr. Hart whatever you <laughs> want to go by And I think he was played by that guy that has the incredible deep voice that's like mm. does all the voiceover stuff and he was in uh he played the Larry's therapist in Curb Enthusiasm and my guess is that guy is like a guest star killer and I'm guessing that he just was like booked on five things and they were like all right well, this, is, <laughs> this is more of a, a nod to like the people from wandavision except for deborah joe rupp who obviously is going to play a more important part this season which i'm delighted right. by because i think she's awesome oh my god i love that her character is basically just kitty foreman yeah again. <laughs> totally. i love that we're getting the full kitty experience um oh. i love that uh, one of my favorite parts of episode two is when they're going around the circle in the basement, like an episode of that '70s yeah. show. And so then they're great. like, "They're like, who's gonna take the high note?" And she's like, "Oh no, I don't do drugs." <laughs> and I was just yeah. like, "Kitty Foreman, I see you." Yes. And I remember the time that you ate a whole batch of Hyde's brownies. We don't forget that shit, Kitty <laughs> Foreman. We don't forget. We'd like to forget Hyde, but we will not. Right. Forget we Hyde's would love brownies. to forget I was Hyde. Say the same but, thing, but I was like, maybe I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Love to forget Hyde, but we do yeah. not forget the time that Kitty Foreman yeah. ate pop brownies. And and I think uh I think also just delightful was her her like you can almost empathize with a person who's like hasn't left the house or done anything fun in a while. Just yeah. getting into a, getting into a weird, awkward situation and yes, ending the hell out of it, just being like, you know what? This is way outside of my comfort zone, but I need human connection and I need to <laughs> hang out with these gals. So I'm going to like nod my I head need along. a girl's night. I'm going to figure out the basic chorus to this like summoning spell. And I'm going to, by the end, she was full blown <laughs> harmonizing and I applaud her for that. I think that was great. Absolutely. You know, like Jean and Rick and Morty. The next oh door my neighbor God, yeah, who just comes door, on yeah. the adventures yeah. by accident. She's the gene of yes. Agatha all along. Well, we, we, we have we've we've broken our own uh policy and we've started talking about episode two, but let's go back to episode one real quick because right. and let's get uh, let's get MT's opinion because yeah. we've been tearing up the mic as usual, Tommy. <laughs> MT, tell us how you feel about this show. I really love these first two episodes, and the first episode especially, because like it, it was very much um, it, it very much has that WandaVision mystery. And like we feel we can see that mystery extended to the, the little uh, library uh, checkout card book tag that was found near uh, Agatha's, I mean, Wanda's body that uh, is apparently an acronym for the Darkhold. It was like debate and rhetoric, uh, debate and rhetoric, known history of what? What was it? What Learning was it again? and debate. Learning, Learning and debate. debate. Darkhold by an Andrew Dark. Hugo, which is an acronym for Wanda Gore. Um, I totally missed that detail in my breakdown over at Heavy Spoilers. And all the comments were, MG, how did you miss this? I'm like, I'm sorry. I was very this thing, tired. This thing has not been out for 24 hours. Can everyone relax? Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard insatiable. doing overnights, folks. To, it be just fair, is. Uh, to be fair, <laughs> I did um, 
pop it into an anagram machine, but like Wondergore isn't like a a, a word. So yeah, it's not a real know. word. So and I was like, oh yeah, there's no anagram in here. But I was like, ah, whatever. I was calling him Andrew Ugo because I wanted to imagine he was an Ugo. I know that they pronounce it Ugo in the show, but I don't care. Andrew I mean, Ugo. I mean, was a was a pretty big Ugo. Uh, he's a pretty Kathan's ugly man. Kathan's an Ugo. So. He just is. <laughs> I don't. I don't approve of shaming anyone's opinion. For me, it's kind of I'm, I'm just I'm not kidding. superficial like you guys, but uh, go ahead. I guess pop off. I guess. Yeah, I guess I'm too LA brained. I'm too LA pilled. But anyway, the point is, um, I, I do like those little details, and like the and like the part when she goes to the library, and we see that whole bookcase of burned books. That was that- cool. Also, who was that guy who was like, "There's been a fire." That's the mailman. Like. WandaVision. That's the mailman? Yeah. That's the mailman? Okay, yeah. okay, okay. I was like, who? I, don't re- I didn't remember who that guy was. I was like, who is this creep who's just lurking behind yeah. the burned book section? Like a, like a goddamn Ray Bradbury being like, <laughs> it was a delight to burn. Like, yeah, no, fuck off. <laughs> Each of these pages burned at 451 degrees Fahrenheit. 451 degrees sure Fahrenheit. That. <laughs> oh, it was a pleasure to burn. That's the real. That's the real line. Sorry, sorry for any Ray Bradbury heads out there. I misquoted. All the Brad, all the Brad boys, Brad boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna what do, you gonna when, do when Ray for comes you? for you? Oh, yeah. when Ray burns for you. That's sorry, better. Right. Right. Sorry, let's no, no, no. You're totally fine. But obviously, like that, that burning um, section of the library was supposed to represent Wanda burning all the dark hold mm-hmm. copies throughout the multiverse. Well, even the and, little divot in the, the, the there was like a little tiny Wonder Gore. Uh, tableau in the center of the burnt books it looked like it had that little u-shaped thing which is basically the altar that collapsed down on her i thought that's Mm. what i interpreted it as i mean that's a good spot i i I didn't see that we gotta talk about the personal episode highlight for myself and i believe mt and possibly whitney as well and that is miss aubrey plaza bursting Mm. out of the scene what do you think about that mt I cool loved boy. her in this episode, these first two episodes. Like, ever since I, I saw her as April Ludgate in Parks and Rec, I've been a huge Aubrey Plaza fan. So, like, her inclusion in the MCU is just so cool. And it's so cool to see both Chris Pratt and Aubrey, Aubrey Plaza in the MCU now. Because, like, it's like, oh, cool, it's Parks and Rec all over again. But, no, um, she was fantastic. Her her whole character is a huge mystery. Um, but, like, one thing I did notice about her, um, her name is that her name literally means, like, uh, River of Life. A real because mm. it's Rio, which is river, and Vidal, which is like li- uh, life or whatever. So I'm just mm. like, I wonder how that factors into her very like green witch, earthy like yeah. uh, personality because like she's all about like nature and all that stuff. So I'm just like, what? Who are you? And like, what? Like, um, like what is it? Like, what is like your identity have to do with like your nature powers? But uh, yeah, she she enters the scene as a uh, Ag Vidal in in a uh, Agatha's little dream world before she like helps uh, Agatha rip herself out of the the hex and then boom agatha's in the nude talking to her neighbor <laughs> it happens to I us mean, all <laughs> i gotta say that was i mean that's a record for mcu nudity as far as i'm concerned right i don't i don't know oh it's sure, that's a record for disney plus nudity yeah, like let's be real here uh that shit is, isn't happening in dcoms in disney channel original <laughs> movies there's no nudity and don't look under the bed mm. so this is a first and i i have a lot of confidence in my body okay i i don't i don't think i have uh, body dysmorphia personally i think i have a great bod i'm so not negging myself. <laughs> Catherine Hahn looks better naked than I ever will in any lifetime. Holy <laughs> shit. She is so beautiful. I cannot believe like even even covered up and blurry from far away. I'm like, girl, I see you. God, you're beautiful. You have a sick bod and I'm here for it. Love Catherine Hahn. Love her and Aubrey Plaza's sexual mm-hmm. tench. Like they were obviously like girlfriend girlfriend in the past like i don't know what happened oh they're exes they absolutely <laughs> dated the past and now do you remember why you hate me no that i've been there girl been there about my exes why do i hate him again he's so cute no don't go back don't go back we're not going back do not go you back can never go back don't ever go back but you know after like they they fight a little bit before, because of something that agatha did in the past that we don't know about uh, uh aubrey plaza's character basically just like hey I'm not going to kill you now, but I'm going to send this whole gang of uh, witches after you. Well, 
I mean, it was kind of an abrupt thing. They're in the morgue, as we said, and, and mm-hmm. Catherine Hahn goes through all the phases of her, her all of her costumes from WandaVision. Mm-hmm. And then she winds up, uh, you know, basically even it from the Garden of Eden. She's got the hair, hair bra. All of yes. a sudden, uh, the teen, I'll just call him teen, mm-hmm. is like kidnapped in her closet. And then Aubrey Plaza comes in and it's like, oh, she's not actually helping her she wants to kill her (laughs) like Mm. she's trying to yeah she wants to kill her she's an assassin and she has her little knife and she does her little chokies Mm. and it's like oh my god step on me mommy (laughs) like oh my god her being like do you remember what pain feels like doesn't it tingle i was like oh yes please aubrey plaza tie (laughs) me up mommy (laughs) the hottest scene in the mcu also also yeah, stab me, mommy. <laughs> stab me, mommy. Also, it- ghost face me, mommy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sorry. I think we've. I think we've. Okay. I think we've sufficiently horned ourselves I'm up for, for Aubrey Plaza. We do need to unfortunately I'm sorry. move I'm sorry. on. Sorry. Okay. Talk about anything sorry, else. We're moving on. Uh, but yeah, no. She. I was surprised, but I think I. I suspect, as I'm sure you guys do too, that. She knew she couldn't kill her. She was just coming in to like scare her and like mm. like any toxic ex make her presence make her known that her presence is is nearby and then also d- not unsuddenly give her a warning that she actually is being stalked by this like you know what they call the night seven or something the like Salem that. Salem seven. Salem seven. Salem seven, which you know sounds like a basketball team, but I yeah. So it is a practical warning, and that's basically what we get for episode one. That was like you know that mm-hmm. was kind of that was kind of where we're left. We're left with Agatha still kind of powerless, but now completely aware that you know the spell has been lifted. She is now finally for the first time uh, in three years uh, in charge of her psyche. She's no longer a prisoner of any kind of scarlet magic spell. So uh, I want to get to episode two because boy, oh boy, we're, we're building, putting a team together. Mm-hmm. Is, is certainly fun. You son of a bitch. I'm in. I was waiting for somebody <laughs> to say that. But, but first we need to talk about the team, the teammates that we have in this episode, mm. our wonderful sponsor, which is. Well, I have to re-roll because that's a real product. It was going to be bird scooters, but that's real. That's the thing that really exists. Oh, well, I mean, they could be little scooters for birds. We've got bird therapy, ladies and gentlemen. Bird oh, therapy. Bird we therapy. are sponsored here today by Bird Therapy. Hey, is your cockatoo kind of caca blue? <laughs> Sounds like another blue chew. <laughs> <laughs> is your is your is your bird is your is your parakeet no longer on para fleet? Yes, oh. there we go. Listen, I. I used to have a pet bird and he was very depressed because, uh, you know, living in a cage will, will definitely make you really, really sad. I, f- at first, I tried to bring it to my regular therapist, but my, then my therapist was like, MT, we have to talk. This is a bird. You're a human, I'm a human <laughs> being therapist. We can't do this. And, I, and then I called her a racist. And I never saw her mm. again. Then I, got, <laughs> then I got a real bird therapist. And um, let me tell you, my bird has never been feeling better ever in its life it's it's hey good for you for speaking your truth on that (laughs) therapist by the way i call it racism when i see it my parrot has been so depressed all he ever does is go life is meaningless meaningless." and uh, ever since i got him a prescription for alexa bird he's really changed his tune now he's been saying stuff like Brock, maybe life is worth living. Brock, maybe I have friends and family to consider. Um, it's not called Lexa Bird. It's called Lexa Crow. Okay, to get it right. Oh. <laughs> Lexa Crow. <laughs> well, I I gotta say, guys, my macaw was acting kind of blah until he went into bird therapy, and now he's got a girlfriend. Mm. He's uh, he's tr- flying south for winter for the first time, and. Uh, I don't want to be too, you know, tawdry, but I saw him buy a pack of bird-sized condoms the other day, so I think he's he's getting it oh in. Oh my god, holy shit, that's totally part of the mating ritual of the specific bird you yes, have. Yes, but safe sex. Is he going to fly and meet some tits soon? Yeah, yeah, yeah he's going to go out and see some tits. <laughs> Whether you're a dirty bird, a flirty bird, or a nerdy bird, bird therapy can be for you. Beautiful, 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 beautiful bird. Anyways, speaking of beautiful tunes, like mm. the one that Tommy was just singing, let's get into episode two. Yes, mm. two. You know, I, I these two episode drops, I always enjoy from Disney because 
episode one usually of these shows is going to leave you on a completely like we have nothing is going to be even close to making sense after episode one right Mm. like in most of these shows and i like that they give you a second one now right away to kind of step take another two steps into the world and the episode two was all about walking the road you know finding the road the the witch's road and and it involved putting a team together and what did you guys think of the our team of witches that we have this season yo i am so beyond amped i mean obviously like i love all the, the all the witches of this of this uh episode but like my favorite most anticipated witch was uh the inclusion of uh, alice gulliver um the the mm-hmm. mall witch that uh cuz like she play like the the character that she's based on is a super badass freaking witch cop that like has very limited appearances in the uh, Marvel comics, but like when I first saw her in like a Doctor Strange comic, I was like, "Yo, like I, we need her in the MCU." Like she's a little bad, like she mixes like her magic with like real life like guns to make like to like solve crimes and shit. I'm like, "Yo, this is fucking badass!" And so like to actually see her included was uh, super super cool. I was trying to figure out where I knew that actress from, and I think mm. it's designated survivor with Kiefer Sutherland. Oh, really? Which was on NBC and then Sick. and then Netflix. I'm pretty sure she played like an FBI agent uh, or a government employee. I want to say that that is what it is. Oh, but hell I, yeah, it, absolutely! It's definitely a political intrigue show. I'm gonna mm. I'm gonna find it out. Twelve seconds later, the Diplomat on Netflix. She played oh. the uh, assistant to the uh, senator's FBI girlfriend, and so she was on the Diplomat, which is the show oh, I cool, watched cool, cool, right, right after Designated Survivor. Very important Tommy TV note there. So I just don't want any, <laughs> I don't want any Diplomat fanatics coming at me. But uh, she was great. I also Petty Lapone. Come on! I mean, oh my just, god, she's, so she's good. incredible. The inside jokes about her having like arguing about having perfect pitch with. So she was Zameda, who was like an all time, what could have been, you know, left SNL kind of early. Obviously, there was like some some she was not unhappy with what she was doing on SNL. And she she left after being a pretty standout cast member mm. and then has had a very successful career since. But to get this kind of like, you know, ensemble role with just other comedy killers is really great. I really uh, am, am thrilled. Yes. Thrilled to death. Um, all right, so the episode begins with, uh, you know, obviously Joe Locke's mysterious character getting untied and joining Agatha on her quest to assemble her coven uh, through the the threads of fate. And uh, the, we first come across, of course, uh, Patty Lapone's Lilia Calderu's character, who has her own little uh, mm-hmm. uh, psychic shop. And uh, mm-hmm. she's reluctant at first until, like, she has, like, a weird, like, freaky, like, I don't know what's going on with her character. Like, her, her brain's messed up or something, but she just freaks out occasionally. And uh, one of her freakouts gives her gives Agatha a list of all the women in her coven, and uh, which leads Agatha to to the doorstep of Jennifer Kale in her little shop of uh, fraudulent items, <laughs> fraudulent wellness items, which I love. Um <laughs> okay, can we also talk about how this is definitely the first MCU property to mention doing Kegels <laughs> with a jade egg shoved <laughs> up your puss, <laughs> just shoved way up in Yo. there, just Kegeling, Kegeling <laughs> for the life of you. When she was like, you want to go splitsies <laughs> on it? I was like, bitch, are you trying to mm-hmm. pass a jade egg from vagina to vagina? Because that's a scissoring <laughs> session I don't want to be in on. Sorry, ladies. Hey, that's just uh, sharing. Sharing is caring, you know? Uh, <laughs> caring is caring and what what are witches known for if not that oh uh, but yes no Jen, the, the character of jennifer kale was like uh very involved with the, the midnight suns at some point so i'm very curious to see if like oh, if cool. she'll uh end up on that team uh but anyway and then after jennifer kale we of course meet alice gulliver who works at the mall um her mom used to be part of this band called lorna and the uh coral shore and she apparently wrote the ballad of the witch's road song which is a uh, a catchy banger. Such a banger. But something apparently mysteriously happened to her on the witch's road. And I wonder mm. if we'll end up seeing her mother at some point on the road. Mm. Um, yeah. Maybe changed or something. I don't know. But throughout this whole thing, Agatha's freaking out about various animals that she's just seeing like throughout her uh, her, her day. Like a, mm-hmm. a crow and then a, a rat and then a, a rat. Someone's a wolf. familiar is stalking her mm-hmm. baby. And uh that's a familiar on her exactly. tail. Exactly, and that's like very much uh, points to the Salem Seven, I think, because like in the comics, mm-hmm. the Salem Seven were animal themed, like mutant sorcerers who all like sort of embody mm. a specific animal or like force of nature. Coven, the Coven assembles, except for the Black Heart, yes. which obviously I believe is supposed to be Rio Vidal, right? But uh, instead, uh-huh. we get Mrs. Davis. Mm-hmm. 
uh, played by Deborah Joe. Which is Rod. my mom's name, by the way. Oh, my mom ooh. is Mrs. Davis. Shout out. <laughs> Shout out. But uh, yeah. Shout out to Susan. Susan, we love you. Mrs. Davis gets pulled into the summoning circle to get the uh, door. And then Agatha goes to plan B once the door doesn't arrive, right? Mm-hmm. She starts provoking the bitches. It almost works because Gulliver's got like, she's ready to blast her. Oh, yes. And oh, yeah. Out of nowhere. The door appears just in the nick of time because that Salem 7 is about to get in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, Joe Joe Locke uh, grabs Nicholas Scratch and everyone hi- hi- hightails it out <laughs> to the Witch's Road, which we kind of get. Reminding me a lot of the Avatar Land in Disney World. Like It's mm. a lot of like neon fluorescent lighting inside. <laughs> so you think that they went down a portal to Disney World? Yes. You think that that's I where do. that staircase I th- went? I think that Bob Iger's <laughs> mandate is all the Marvel properties now have to lead to a tri- they're all very special Disney episodes. Remember how like sitcoms would always have like the family's yes, going to Disney episodes. World and then it would yeah. basically just be an infomercial for the park. They're like, we're going on the new Splash Mountain ride, Stephanie. You're not tall enough. And then, uh, but uh, so I think, yeah, we'll probably get that. And then that, I mean, that was really, this episode was really kind of all about putting the team together. Not a ton actually happened in terms of story. Right. But, uh, but, but we got the team together. A lot happened in terms of questions that were left with, however. Yeah, mm. sure, so sure. One of, one of the questions that I wanted to ask you guys, what do you think the deal is with Nicholas Scratch? Who do you think? Mm. Who do you think that is? What do you think is going on? I don't know what, what you guys are. What you guys think? But like, I think that like the teen will end up being revealed as Nicholas Scratch, um, and like mm. for some, like I think that Agatha might have like done a deal with like Mephisto or the devil at some point in the past, and like she sacrificed her own son for more power because the dark hole makes you crazy mm. like that. And so like in a similar deal to like. Uh, Peter Parker and Mary Jane in the comics like they're like all right I'm not gonna like kill your son but I'm gonna make you like make your son forget everything about you and live a different life and like you know you'll get you'll never be together again but like you always feel the longing for each other and so like I think that like the, the the threads of fate sort of like brought them back together again but like now they're just friends and like the then I feel like by the end of the season she'll realize that oh no this is my son and sort of like mm. you know break through that spell, but I don't know what. Yeah, because she can't. It's very, it's very interesting that the spell not only keeps him from revealing his name to her, mm-hmm. it also reveal he can't reveal any details about his life to mm-hmm. her. Like when he goes into his yeah. backstory, it just goes into like the adults and Peanuts cartoons. Like he's just like kind of like mm. yeah. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. yeah. So yeah, I, I I I'm very interested in that. I I don't. Who did you think Nick? You think Nicholas Scratch is is jo, Joe Locke? Whitney, is that was that your theory? No, I don't. No. I I think that uh, I think that Joe Locke is going to be Billy Wanda's son. That's uh, my prediction on that. And then I think that Nicholas Scratch may have been Agatha's son because some fun facts uh, from the Scarlet Witch here. A little a little witchcraft knowledge for for all you uh, witches and warlocks at home. Um, basically when someone is given like a a locket with a lock of hair inside Mm. of it, um, there's two meanings of that in witchcraft. The first is that whoever possesses the lock of hair can have magical control over Mm. the person that the hair belongs to. Mm. So I think that it's either that she once had control over the devil, she once had control over Nicholas Scratch, but no longer does. However, the child's drawings make me think that it might be her son. Mm. And the reason why I think I'm leaning more towards it's her son, as opposed to it's somebody that she had like overt powers over and was like in control of in the same way that, Scarlet Witch was in control of Westview. Um, I think it's more likely that it's her son, A, because obviously the little crayon drawings, and B, because the other meaning for a lock of hair uh, held inside of a locket to witches is that during the Victorian era, it was believed that witches stored a lock of their dead children's hair Mm. in a locket because they believed that this kept like a part of the child alive and with them. Mm. And they did it in like mourning and in remembrance. And because Agatha has been alive for so long, I'm wondering if her child died in the Victorian Mm. era and Mm. she's still remembering all of this. And in the same way that Wanda manifested her children, perhaps that's how she got the crayon drawings. Cause I doubt that they had crayons in the Victorian (laughs) era. So I don't think they're that old, but like, it might be like manifestations of her imagination 
combination that like put the crayon drawings in the house. Um, so I think that that leans pretty strongly towards she might be Nicholas Scratch's mommy, mm. itchy mommy. Let's I mean, go. like Agatha is Nicholas Scratch's mother in the comics. So like it definitely would make sense for that yeah. to be the case here. Um, but like that hasn't been 100 percent established yet in the MCU. So like, who knows? Maybe they're not. Who knows? Um, Who's to say? <laughs> but yeah, like I'm very interested to see like where this uh, this uh, witch witch's road like leads these witches um, because like obviously there's a lot of parallels between this show and the Wizard of Oz. Uh, so like we're very much likely going to see everyone sort of like learn a lesson about themselves and like sort of correct their particular shortcoming because like towards the end Agatha calls uh, Lilia Calderu a coward and um, mm-hmm. uh, the Jennifer Kale uh, a fraud and uh, Alice a uh, disappointment. And so, like, it's just like, all right, so, like, those are the three, like, all right, you need a heart, you need a, like, brain, like, that sort of scenario. Mm. And so, like, over the course of their adventure, like, they'll sort of, like, get whatever they're missing. And, like, that's the real purpose of the Witch's Road. Like, it's not actually, like, oh, we'll give you whatever. It's just like, oh, no, you'll learn a lesson about yourself. And that's what's missing. And that's the whole value of the road. I like um, it. I really love though that the gay teen thought that they were just going on a road trip. Just like same. I would too. I'd be like, yeah, so where are we driving, guys? You want to stop and pick up Gatorade and Cheese It Snacks mix before we uh before we hit the the dusty trail? I loved that. He was he was already building a Chapel Roan playlist uh for for the Witches Road drive, starting with uh uh I like what you like, uh long hair, no bra, that's my type in reference to Catherine Hahn. So oh. that was that was song number one on the oh, list. Is that Rose how you say playlist. your name? Ch- it's Chapel Roan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Chapel. I thought Rome. it was Ch- Ch- Chappelle Roan. I was like, who the fuck is oh, Chappelle no. Roan? That's her evil twin. <laughs> That's her evil twin. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, but you, anyway, before we go, what are you guys' predictions for episode three? I feel like we're going to have to get some more clarity on uh, the, uh, uh, some more directional on who a big bad is for this mm. season. You know, I think like right now there's the Salem Seven hunting Agatha. Right. Then there's obviously Rio Vidal is like a kind of maybe a villain, but probably just a, a, a misunderstood, uh, you know, former friend that, that will, will be needed to save the day. But I'm interested to see, like, are, I mean, are we going to get a, a more uh, mysterious uh, MCU villain for this show? Or, or is it just the, is it just all about each of these uh, witches kind of redeeming themselves and becoming the fully p- empowered which versions of themselves and then you know john locke whatever his destiny is and breaking that curse and spell and i also you know kind of don't rule out there being like some of the people inside the team breaking bad in the season you know Mm. i mean like they're witches they're witches they're not like you know knights of the round table or anything (laughs) or, or you know or like you know red cross nurses like they're 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 not good they're usually villains in the comics Mm. right like they're like or or at least anti-villains or anti-heroes mm-hmm. so yeah I, I i'm hoping in episode three we get a little more uh or no i'm not hoping i i, I i'm assuming we'll get more clarity I'm, I'm i'm on board i like this show i think it's great i think it's beautifully i love the design of wandavision it was so fun to be in that world again um and even expand what the town looks like in normal you know normal times uh but i'm very excited to get into the witchiness of it all yes for sure same 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 we have just been blessed with uh witch shows right and left la- ladies gentlemen and babies we have so many good witch and shows they're both lesbian uh, witch if shows. you can't handle me at my <laughs> witches yeah they're both lesbian witch shows and uh if you can't handle me at my witches you don't deserve to slam in the back of my dragula guys what are your last thoughts on episodes one and two of Agatha. There were two very great episodes that like were meant to set up the rest of the season. And, uh, you know, I very much can't wait to, for more of that one division esque mystery mm-hmm. that these first two episodes have, uh, sort of just laid out and, uh, it's going to be great. I'm very excited. How about you guys? I loved the, the, the first 15 minutes of episode one in that world of uh, a true crime, true detective, mayor of East town, just, uh, pitch perfect satire of it. I thought that was wonderfully executed. And, you know, I already knew the cat with the amazing cast they had that once they got into the coven, 
uh, episodes, it was going to be incredible. But just to get that little appetizer first to me was a, a true highlight. I have been excited to see what Aubrey Plaza does with this role, uh, specifically because she crushed it in Legion. I don't know if you guys watched uh, Legion, but she was so good in that as a, a, a little scary lady. And she's been so good and so scary so far in this episode. I really like that they're taking chances with how scary they're allowing it to be. We got that actually like huge, terrifying jump scare, uh, like 32 minutes into the second uh, episode. Shout out to uh, my friend Jesse, who I texted about the jump scare because it scared the shit out of me. Uh, very terrifying. I love that they are leaning so hard into the spookiness of the witch's coven and Halloween and uh, where where we are right now. So I'm excited to see what happens next. Like, I love going down this mystery with all of our pals over at the Palaxy. Thank, thank you guys yes. so much for watching this episode of Guardians of the Palaxy and for watching Agatha all along because it's a really great show. Um, and we'll catch you guys next week for more discussion. You guys are amazing. Thank you guys for watching. Goodbye. Mwah. Bye, pals. Charlotte Witt, Tom DeMaximoff, and House of MT. Let's out. go, Agatha. Let's go. <laughs> Agatha. <laughs>